I booted up my game, Synth Beasts, for a routine playtest session, but after an hour, the truth hit me. Something was missing. The game was flat. Playing it was fun, but there was no real way for players to express their unique style, and some of my favorite games and core inspirations like Hollow Knight have player expression as a core tenant of the progression. In that game, the charms that you pick up let you tailor your playstyle to your own strengths and preferences, but in Synth Beast, despite it being a creature collector where you can swap around the monsters that you used, swapping those monsters didn't actually change the fact that each one behaved the same way for every single player. And it was at that point that I realized that I had a very serious issue on my hands. How could I transform a flat, invariable experience into something that truly empowered players to make the game their own? So the thing is, Synth Beasts has to be deep, right? Uh, well, the thing is that I'm running a Kickstarter for it next month, and if the demo doesn't show the very best version of itself to players, then it's just not going to work out. The catch, however, was that while I wanted to add more layers to the game, I couldn't afford to spend months tinkering with ideas that might end up thrown away. I needed a kind of playground to experiment with mechanics quickly, without worrying about whether stuff would break, and that's actually exactly what I did. Instead of overhauling Synth Beasts directly and sending different builds with incremental changes to playtesters to see exactly what kind of systems would work, um, I actually built a whole new game called Wanted Shadows. And this roguelike side project became my testing ground for the badge system mechanics that would eventually transform Synth Beasts into more than what it currently was. So with Wanted Shadows, I wasn't just prototyping, it became a kind of figurative, experimental lab where I threw a bunch of ideas at the wall without picking and choosing, and let players tell me what parts of the game were the most fun. The thing is, I needed to figure out two key aspects of the implementation of Synth Beast Badge System through Wanted Shadows. First was the technical aspect. How exactly was I going to program it so that I could add new badges without hard coding a bunch of stuff? Second was the design aspect, and this was the real important one. What kinds of powers are actually fun? Are stat changes enough or should I go all out and have all sorts of modifications? How can I encourage the players to test out different playstyles? Well, the beauty of testing all of this in a different game was that if an idea didn't work out, I wasn't just throwing it away, I was learning from it and integrating it into a cheap commercial game. In fact, Wanda Shadows actually ended up releasing on Steam for just $199 US dollars and is soon going to release on consoles. So. As I just mentioned a few moments ago, one of my key goals was to make the system really easy for me to use on a technical level. I couldn't be just copy pasting stuff all the time, so adding a new stat modifier for a badge should be as easy as just creating a new variable, programming in what that variable would do, and that's it. So I'm not going to bore you with the exact details of how I did this, but the code on screen was what I landed on, and basically the game has this class that holds all of the potential stat modifications that a badge could afford, and each modification stacks onto itself with additional badges. So this part here on screen is what's responsible for the stacking, and what it does is it iterates through every single stat mod and makes it stack. So it's very easy, there's no copy pasting. I don't need to go in and specify how each stat stacks with itself. If the stat is a true or false flag, it just stacks a certain way. If it's a number, it stacks another way and so on. It's all based on what the variable type is. So that was solved. But what about the design aspect that I also mentioned earlier? Well, I drew inspiration from one of the games that I personally feel has some of the best progression design in modern times, and that is Hollow Knight. In Synth Beast, the badge mechanic ended up working much like the charm system in that game, but there is one key difference. Because the game is a creature collector, I had the choice to either make the badges work for every single monster altogether, or allow the player to choose what badges to give to each monster. And I tested both situations, and I'm going to be honest, while it would have been really cool to allow each monster to have their own badge loadout, there was just way too much micromanagement when I tested it. It would have made sense if the game didn't have that many monsters, but because there are already almost 40 of them, and there are going to be just more added to the game throughout development, it just didn't feel fun, and it wasn't going to get any better. So that means that the badge system basically works the same way as Hollow Knight, right? Uh, well, not really. While the badges do apply to all monsters, and so there's basically just one unified badge loadout, kind of like Hollow Knight, some badges really benefit some monsters over others, so that's where the differentiator comes in. Depending on which ones you find around the world, your options will benefit different choices, and so you will be encouraged to play differently. Just to give you an example, let's talk about one of the more extreme badges that I ended up implementing, the double-edged sword badge. Also, by the way, the icons for all the badges are not done yet. I'm still balancing things, so things might change. So bear with the temporary art at the moment. So the double-edged sword badge, when equipped, it doubles the damage you deal. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, it also makes it such that whenever an enemy hits you, you automatically die in one hit. 
So, how does this benefit some monsters over the others? It seems quite universal. Well, firstly, this is probably not a badge you'll have equipped all the time, unless maybe you're doing a challenge run or you're maybe a bit psychotic. Uh, but if you think about it, what is more prone to being hit? A monster with a ranged attack or a monster with a melee attack? Well, definitely a monster with a melee attack because it's closer to the enemies, so this badge strengthens your ranged monsters, although at a big cost, of course. There are many other badges apart from this one that I'm currently implementing into the game, taking everything that I learned from developing Wanted Shadows, but here are some more examples that are less extreme than the one that I just showed you. So this is the Syringe badge, and what it does is it increases how much juice you get from hitting enemies with melee attacks. And if you haven't watched my other videos, juice is basically this resource that you get when you hit an enemy and you can use it to heal. Then another badge example are the Quick Boots, and it increases your movement speed, which is kind of not super useful usually, but it's super useful for these kind of race challenges. Finally, there's the Totem Badge, which increases the gold you gain at the cost of getting less XP for your current monster. So this all sounds great, right? The badge system works, Synth Beast feels like it has way more player expression, and the game is overall just more fun. But the truth is that this system that I just explained wasn't my first attempt at taking Wanted Shadows' concepts and applying them to Synth Beasts. Earlier, the system was much simpler, and the way that it worked was that you would get items, much like the badges that exist right now, but instead of being able to equip them, they each had stat bonuses that they would automatically apply to the monster's stats. On paper, this sounds really cool for progression, uh, you know, you keep on getting stronger and stronger with the more items that you get, but the significant downside was that the player expression was extremely limited. Because you didn't get to choose which buffs to apply, they were just always active, and this means that the cooler effects that introduce risk and reward in the current badge system were just impossible. So imagine adding the badge that had you deal double damage but made you die in one hit from the other system. That would mean that if you got the item, the game would suddenly become ultra hardcore and probably not very fun for most players. So while the new system adds player choice, the added benefit that is the true benefit of the system is that because not every single item is active at once, each individual item can be way more interesting. On top of that, you can swap them around depending on the situation that you're in. So that adds just so much more gameplay variety throughout your playthrough and it just works way better for the kind of game that I'm trying to make. So I've explained how Wanted Shadows benefited Synth Beast in two main ways, but there's actually a secret third one as well. I've gone over how it's helped me learn how to technically implement the badge system and also how to figure out what kind of badge buffs would work best for the game and what kind of framework to present the badges in. But because I also released the game on Steam, the link is in the description by the way, it also actually helped the game financially. I developed Wanted Shadows really quickly in a very experimental manner, so it's not a huge game by any means, but I'm really happy with how experimental and different it is compared to other games in the genre. So because of that, I only charged $1.99 for it, but even then it recuperated all of its development budget and helped increase Synth Beast's budget as well. So that also allowed the game to be improved. The other way that I'm planning on funding the rest of Synth Beast development, especially the console ports, is through a Kickstarter as I mentioned before. But one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that if you have a really really cool idea for a badge to add to the game, there will be a tier that allows you to add your own. There will also be tons of other cool tiers like making your own monster, designing your own boss battle, or even building your own island since the game is set in an open world archipelago. So if any of this interests you, follow the Kickstarter page in the description, and the campaign will allow you to get Steam, Switch 1, Switch 2, PlayStation Xbox copies, so we've got it all covered. Anyways, that's the end of the video, hope you liked it, and let me know if you have any cool badge ideas that you think would work well for the game, and I'll see you all next time, bye.